Today I'll be turning on a type of wood that I've never turned before and, and actually never seen before. It's a magnolia and it is soaking wet. I picked this up with some more pieces of magnolia and some cherry two days ago and all of that had been just recently cut down. This is 10 by 10 and it's about five inches thick. What I see that I like is these wavy growth rings. I think it's going to give the inside a pretty cool look as well as the outside. I'm going to try to turn it down to size and see what happens because apparently it's uh, a very stable wood. It doesn't move around a lot and it doesn't crack. That's what I read. I've already put a hole in there for a worm screw. Let me get it mounted up and we will start turning it. Okay, that's plenty tight. I'm going to sharpen up my gouges and we'll get going. All set. And I did just spray the lathe down with some WD-40. I've got the tool rest set at about a 45 because I want to come across this way to round it up. That way I'm not going straight into end grain. I'm slicing across it. We are turning around 620 RPM. I like what I'm seeing. It's very interesting. Hey, that is pretty smooth. A little rough right here, but I still need to flatten that out more for a base and then get a tenon on here. I need to leave that tenon a little big because I don't know what it what it's actually going to do. It might warp like crazy. 
and I'm hoping that doesn't. <clears throat> so I'm going to measure that up and get it down to size and we'll get it flipped around. I've got it flipped around. I'm going to go ahead and flatten this area right here. Then I'll start hollowing it out and it won't be long and I'll need to pull the tailstock out of the way. Same 640 RPM. All right, it's, uh, yeah, I like the looks of it. Very interesting. How thin to go. Probably a quarter inch. Got the tailstock out of the way now. And I think I can get in here, get this down to size, work my way down slowly, removing some of this as I go. That's the best way to keep some strength in that wall as you turn it. That looks good up at the top, but I do want to take some more off down to here. So I'll probably take another almost an eighth off of there. pretty even. I don't really need this here now. It's not doing much because I have this for support. So I'll go ahead and cut that away and I'll go back to my 5 8 gouge on that. Alright, same process. I'm at the point where it changes angles here, so I've got to be aware of that. But I'll take it down, leaving some stock here, and just keep going back and forth doing that. But I need to change the angle quite a bit, maybe uh, 10 degrees. That will be it. And that's it. So I just need to blend this little step here and smooth out some ridges. 
Well, it really has an unusual grain configuration in here because the grain is sort of swirly. But it's look at this what it's made here. I think that is really cool. So I think I have everything where I need it. And it's just going to be how it dries. But I still have this little spot in the middle that I got to take down. And I think I'll use the negative rig scraper and then I'll check for any ridges here. That really makes some nice little shavings. You can tell I have the tenon underneath that because it sounds different and it turns different. Just going to make a pass up the wall here. Oh, that feels nice. So yes, it still feels very wet. This has been sitting for three days now, and I knew I wouldn't be able to work on it for that amount of time. So I put this fan here, and it's been blowing on it for three days, just cold air. It does. It is a heater, but I didn't want any heat on it. Feels pretty nice. It did warp a little bit. Let me get the fan out of the way and uh, show you what we're going to do for sanding. There. So. I'll use sheets of paper and I'm going to start with 150 just because it's already pretty smooth. I will also be sanding in reverse at around uh, 378 RPM. And let's see if we can get this sanded up to 400, do the same thing to the inside, and then we'll get a finish on it. Well, I'm not sure how it's going to sand, but we're going to find out. Not bad. Not bad at all. So it's down to a quarter inch or less, and that dries pretty fast. And just that air blowing in there has taken care of it. And I'm really happy with that. Okay, so I'm not going to make you watch anymore because it'll look exactly the same through all the grits. And when I come back, we'll get a finish on this and see what it looks like. Time for some sanding sealer, and I'll be using a shellac base sanding sealer. Well, that looks pretty nice. I think the main thing with uh, what I like about this is these kind of a spidery looking growth rings. Okay, that's uh, kind of what it's going to look like. So I'll get a, probably another coat of this on and I haven't decided yet what I'll be doing, but I'll let you know when we come back. I put a second coat of the sanding sealer on here. I've decided to use the axe abrasive paste for my final finish. That and the polish. Okay, I'll get this done and then use the polish restoring paste. And I'm not going to show you all that because I've got a video showing nothing but how I use the abrasive paste and polish. And I'll put a link in the description for that. The reason I'm calling this a 36 minute bowl is because I get asked a lot how long did that take to turn. Well I don't keep track of that but what I did here was I took all the files up to the point of sanding and getting the finish on. I put that in my software. It came out to be 36 minutes and some odd seconds. Well, that also included showing you the blank, getting it on the worm screw, and then turning the outside, put a tenon on there, and then turning the inside. So that was all of the turning time. I also had some time where I stopped and talked about 
what I was doing. So it was less than 36 minutes to do the actual turning. So let me get this done here and when I come back we'll remove the tenon. Time to remove the tenon. I'm about a quarter inch right here and I need to take the tenon off plus a little bit of that so it sits flat on the base. I've got some of this padded material inside of here that will go against that block. We'll see how it runs. Not too bad at all for this being a bowl that was turned totally wet. Half inch bowl gouge and I'll start by removing most of that tenon. I've got it sanded to 320. I think that's fine. The only thing left to do is remove the nub. This wood is so soft I could take a chisel and just carve it right off. Or I could use Phil's trick and turn it off while it's on the lathe spinning. So, I don't know. What do you think? If this goes wrong, this wood is really soft and it's really going to get banged up. Oh, what the heck. Let's do it. I switched to a spindle gouge. It got small real fast. So I'm going to slow it down to uh, around 200 and see if we can do this. How about that? So there it is. I'm sanding this up and uh, I'll get it signed and put some finish on it. Cute little bowl. I'll be right back. So here it is. A very wet magnolia log to a bowl in 36 minutes turning time. And I wasn't trying to see how fast I could turn this. I just wanted to get it turned before it moved if it was going to move. Well it didn't really move all that much but just a little bit. And I'll keep this for a couple of weeks before I gift it out and then I can make sure that the bottom's flat and it sits good. It finished 9 inches in diameter. It's 3 and 8 inches tall. The base is 5 inches and the walls are 7 32ths of an inch thick. I finished it with Zinsser Seal Coat, which is a sanding sealer, and Axe Abrasive Paste and Polishing Paste, which makes for a very quick and nice finish. The colors are somewhat interesting, but I've got is staining on the ends. I'm not sure really what's going on. If you know what that's all about, let me know in the comments. What I really like is that grain. and It's got kinks in it. It just doesn't go up in perfect circles. I like that a lot. And what it's made inside the bowl, and you let me know if you can see this, I see a frog in there, a bow-legged frog. That's one of his legs right there with his knee kicked out. The other one's bull-legged as well. If you look up here, I see his head up there with his mouth open. Let me know if you see that, because I sure do, and I can't stop seeing it. So, I turn this just to show that you can make a very simple and a pretty bowl, and it can be a lot of fun and very easy to do. And I do hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to let me know if you liked the video. A thumbs up would be great, but I also love reading your comments, and I will do my best to answer them all. A special thanks to all my subscribers, and if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. I do all types of turnings, and feel free to let me know what you'd like to see. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.